What's up everyone? Welcome to another QTP tutorial brought to you by www.qtptutorial.net. I am so glad to have everybody here today. I appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to join us. It's always a pleasure to teach everybody and help this community grow. If you are new to qtptutorial.net, let me tell you what we do here. We take all of our knowledge and our experience over the years. We bundle it up into high quality videos to make anybody from manual tester into an automation engineer or even take a current automation engineer and make you guys extreme experts. Our goal is to teach everything from A to Z related to QTP automation. And that's what we do. So if you're interested, keep watching. Today, we're going to discuss a very popular topic. And that is API testing. I'm going to be doing it with the latest version of QTP at the time, which is now UFT 11.5. So why this topic is so important these days is that slowly the agile testing methodology is taking over the waterfall testing methodology. And as a result, there's much less time for automation testing and much less time for GUI testing. And so what's becoming important is API testing. API testing is the new standard that you should be able to do when you're automating applications. So before I get into it and show you guys how to do API testing, I think it's very important that we just go over a few basics. This is actually a pretty complicated topic. Creating the API architecture is a very complex process, but I'm going to try and cover the basics just to give you guys a basic understanding of what you need to know so that you can proceed comfortably after this point. So what is API? Well, that's an acronym that stands for Application Programming Interface. And what that means is most people are used to testing the GUI, graphical user interface. And how that worked was, you know, you guys had some test cases, you would open up some application where you see some stuff, you would go in, do some stuff to that graphical user interface, you would get some results, and based on that, you would have your test cases and your testing scenarios. But now, you need to be able to test something before that. Because before the GUI, we create the API. And that has to do with the developer code and developer methods and all that kind of stuff. And that API is developed and then plugged into the GUI to make everything function. So API tests involve communication directly with the application and by bypassing the UI that we are used to testing. So what does that mean? It means that we have a client. So that may be, you know, whoever the user is that communicates with the web, the internet, okay? They send a SOAP request to the web, and then the web sends that SOAP request to the server. Our server, based on the requests, will send back a response that contains all the relevant information. And that response goes to the web, and then from the web back to the client is another SOAP response. And that is pretty much the whole process of API testing simplified. So what is the SOAP request and SOAP response is probably what you are asking now. Well, SOAP is an acronym for Simple Object Access Protocol. And it's for communicating between the applications. So as you can see, if I want to communicate from the client to the server, I have to send the SOAP request. And what would the SOAP request contain? Well, now let me open up UFT so that I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So you can actually get a visual. Let me get UFT up and running. I got my taskbar on my other monitor so you guys don't see it, but I just launched UFT. It's a trial version. You guys can download it as well. I actually created an entire tutorial on how to download and install UFT. So if you missed that, go ahead and catch it. It's very useful. You can do it in under 10 minutes. So here is UFT. 
I'm going to open up a recent solution, which is here, QTP tutorial, and that's going to load all of my tests that are attached to that solution. Now, for you guys, I'm going to create a new test. So I'm going to add new test, and there's going to be an API test. Okay, let's call it API tutorial. I'm going to add it. And now here it is. Check it out, guys. There's a few things we'll go through it. But first, I wanted to show you guys what a SOAP request and a SOAP response looks like so that you get a visual and then I can explain things in a better manner. So, imagine this is a test case from the start to the end. And here, some actions occur. If I wanted to add some stuff, some actions to this flow, I go to toolbox and let's say I want to test the API for this mathematical functions. So for example, all I have to do is drag this multiply in here. And now if you look over here to the right, I get two inputs, right? I get an A and a B. So for example, let's do five times four. Now come down here. And what do we expect when we do five times four, we expect 20, right? And it just makes sure that it validates. So what just happened is I created a test case. So the test case is use this multiply API, which will invoke some code that will contact the server and multiply five times four. And then the expected value is 20. And we're going to check to see if that works. So I'm going to hit F5 to run. Give it a second. Check it out, the print log here, guys. It did everything. Now it's going to populate the results, which I think I turned off, so I'm going to show them to you here. If we expand all, so we can see, here's the test case, right? Multiplied five times four, the result is 20. And our checkpoint is we expected 20, and we got 20, so then it's a pass. Great stuff. We just tested the multiplication functionality of our application. And there may be many other functionalities, right? Whether your API does, you know, like uh, get username, get password, maybe get address, set address, and so on and so forth. That's the kind of things that you should be testing through your API. So let's go back to the diagrams and we'll discuss it more. So what you guys saw was the SOAP request that was sent. And in there, at certain places, it had values of five times four, and it sent that to the server. The server returned the response, and that response said, hey, the actual value that occurred after executing all these functions was 20. And that came back to us, and then we validated with UFT, and it said, good to go, the test case is a pass. I hope that makes sense to you guys. If not, always leave questions. We'll answer them. So let's discuss the SOAP because I think it's very important for you guys to understand it so that you can visualize what I'm talking about. So this is just a protocol that's used for communicating between applications. It's a format for sending messages. It communicates via the internet, like I said here. It's platform independent. That's what makes it really awesome. You know, it can communicate between different platforms. SOAP is also language independent because it's based on XML. If you guys know something about XML, you guys know that it allows you to transfer data from one application to another. So, for example, if Facebook wants to communicate with Twitter, how they do that is using APIs. They will send different SOAP requests and responses. They may actually come in another format besides SOAP. But let's say they do use SOAP. They send requests and responses using SOAP. And all that information is stored in an XML. So if you guys imagine this XML, let me show you what it looks like. These are the services. Check it out. Look, address finder. An address finder has methods like find address. This is what the developers designed. And here's the example 
a request. Guys, it's an XML and it contains values such as these. So you can check, for example, we send, imagine this, but for our multiplication functionality. And we sent a request that said first value is five, second value is four. And we got back a response where in some element that it would contain our answer. And so based on that answer, we can validate things. So these are sample SOAP requests and responses. I know it may look crazy and complicated, but you don't really have to worry about knowing what's going on in here. I think what's really important for you guys is to just understand the concept that XML, which is this, which you see here, is used to communicate between the client and the server. And the server sends back this response, also in XML format. And the beauty is that everybody is able to change this XML format into whatever language they desire. So if one application is developed in .NET and another one is in Java, they are able to communicate with each other because the intermediary is the XML. And so they take that XML stuff, they convert it into whatever language they need, and now they may continue performing whatever actions they desire in that application. So that's what all that means. And that's what also this means is that it's simple and extensible. And SOAP allows you to get around firewalls. By the way, I got this all from W3 Schools. If you guys want to learn more about SOAP, just go ahead on there and you can get into deeper understanding with it. So I hope this makes sense, guys. The key concepts of API testing are that we are focusing on the business logic of the architecture. With the GUI testing, what was happening was that we are focusing on the user experience. And that's very important. But in an agile environment, it's extremely hard to sit and wait for a GUI to show up when you can be testing APIs. The other key to API testing, guys, is that it's important to understand the functionality of the API. So for example, when we go back to our application, here we are selecting a service, which is authentication, let's say, and we are selecting its methods. So you need to understand what these methods actually do. Get token method. What is its goal? What kind of token is it getting? And what is the appropriate response? Those are the kind of questions that you should ask in order to do API testing. Just make sure you understand it and your team can help you with that. The developers certainly can help you with that, with the understanding, and they can even pinpoint you to the exact element, XML element, where you need to put in your input values and where you expect the output values. So that's that. So after this huge discussion, what are the benefits of API testing? Well, they are much faster than GUI tests. Why? Because it's a simple communication between the client and the server that just goes through the internet. So imagine this. If I wanted to test the authentication, for example, of getting a token, I just randomly found this website, so I'm not fully understanding exactly what all these services do. But let's say the authentication is you put in a username and then you send it and then you have to get back to make sure that this username is correct and exists in the database. So how would you do it through a GUI? You have to open the application. You have to type in the username. You probably have to hit the send button and then validate to see if the correct response comes back. You know, that may take what, a minute, two minutes just to test that service. But with an API, what's happening is you're directly just putting that into an XML, you're sending it and you're getting back the response. And how long does that take? Maybe five seconds if that. So that's why API testing is much faster than GUI testing. You can run a thousand API tests in a fraction of the time that you can run a thousand GUI tests. The other great benefit of API testing is that they can be created without the UI. They can be done earlier in the SDLC. So for example, as your development is making code, you can be creating API tests to test their code. And these API tests 
would do things such as, for example, you know, if you want to test the boundaries or if you want to test the logic. Remember, you're testing the logic of the architecture. So if you understand the architecture well, you can be testing its logic, you know, to make sure that, hey, if I want to get back the username, you know, can I put in a whole bunch of random characters? Can I put in special characters? That kind of stuff. And you should be getting the appropriate response back. Finally, the other great benefit of API testing is that it's actually easier to create than a GUI test. Like I showed you guys, it's so basic. It doesn't involve, you know, opening the application, typing username and password, sending that username and password, then waiting for a response from the application. That's a whole bunch of steps. With the API test, you put in the values that you want to send, and then you check for the values that you want to get back. And that's it. That's your entire test done in an instance. All right. I just noticed we're running up on 20 minutes here. I think this is the perfect time for me to transition to the next video where I'll pick up where we left off. I want to say thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you catch the next session. Make sure you sign up for our email list. You guys get all of these benefits here, which are pretty amazing if I do say so myself. And anyways, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.